is the air that I breathe and to love you. What's going on, Jerome's? Uh, beautiful Thursday. Birds are chirping and stuff, and it's time for another Vikings news dump. So it is indeed San Francisco 49ers week. Uh, the reigning defending NFC champions. Give me a tough test, but here's the thing, too. If the Vikings want to be taken seriously, they got to win games like this. And don't care that they're six point dogs or four and a half point dogs, wherever you may find it, does not matter. Win outright. And go from there, man. Of course, last year, Vikings got things done. You know, a couple injuries on both sides. Vikings missing Jefferson. Uh, 49ers missing Trent Williams and Debo, I believe. Uh, but Jordan Addison was the hero of the day, even though he's probably going to miss this Sunday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's what's interesting. So, Will Raggett, Sports Illustrated, pointed this out. The Vikings have actually beaten the Niners eight straight times at home. So, go, going... Back in the day. Last time the Vikings lost to the 49ers at home was back in 1990. Talk, talk about like Joe Montana type stuff. But they won in 91. They won in 94 with Warren Moon. A 99. Dante Culpepper getting his roll on. 2003. Uh, 35-7. No, no problem. Then you got 2009, of course. Greg Lewis, welcome to Minnesota. So I'll fully admit something. I, I So I remember this game distinctly because the Vikings got up 14 nothing, And... Didn't have the show back then, back in 2009. Uh, I think I, I think I mowed the lawn. Pretty sure I did. But I came in for the tail end, and then I saw the Greg Lewis, welcome to Minnesota. Type play. It was fantastic, man. Uh, then, of course, uh, 2012 was uh, the beat the beat the bejesus out of Alex Smith. Uh, and then you have 2018, which <sighs> we after that asked Jimmy, one of the greatest like, like Everson has so many great lines and they all involve ass like we after that ass jimmy kurt cousins is ass thank you i love him, man hope he's doing well hmm. uh then of course last year uh the speaking of kurt cousins the vikings got done monday night football 20 22 to 17 that that was a high watermark of the kurt cousins uh vikings career wasn't it or i i guess green bay after that touchdown to addison then yeah 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 uh but but either way bring it on Bring that ish on, man. Mm. Uh, and the San Francisco 49ers do have a formidable pass rush, but the Vikings, fortunately, have one of the best, if not the best, tackle duos in the National Football League. Greg Rosenthal, go. Uh, the Vikings tackles erase Brian Burns and Kavion Thibodeau. Also, Brian Burns is a bad dude. I think Thibodeau might be a little bit overrated, but Burns is legit, man. Uh, Minnesota could have the best duo in football. They do. They, they do. So Burns and Thibodeau combined for two pressures on the day, zero sacks. And also Brian O'Neill was PFF's number one graded right tackle uh, for week one. And Darisol was just out there erasing fools. And both are great in the run game. Uh, both are pillars uh, in pass protection. And if you can sync up that into your offensive line, I mean, Brando's looking good. Bradbury looked fair to Midland, as usual. And once Reisner comes off of IR, potentially pushing Ed Ingram at that right guard spot, might have something going, man. Speaking of going, so uh, so we rage against the machine when it comes to uh, power rankings because we have the only correct power rankings in the known universe. Uh, but pro football talk, uh, me, pro football focus, but there's out. Uh, week two, San Francisco 49ers start the season on top. I can't wait to dethrone number one. If you want to be the boss, you got to beat the boss. Uh, but the Vikings check in at 15, which is relatively fair uh, it, it, compared to the other national media power rankings. Vikings hovering around like the early 20s, somewhere in there uh, on a lot of them. But uh, strength, da, 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 da. projected win total is now 8.5. Kind of beats 6.5 or the 5.5 that opened. Uh, percent chance of making the playoffs, 41.7%. Mm, take that. Uh, as well as uh, yeah, chance of winning the Super Bowl, 1.9%. I'll take a 1-50 in 50 dart throw to raise that Jerome Barty. Why the hell not, man? Uh, this is what they wrote. Why the Vikings won week one. Er, the Vikings relied on the surprising efficiency of Sam Darnold. <laughs> surprising efficiency. Uh, in, in the Vikings debut, uh, Darnold went 19-24 uh, for 208 passing yards, two touchdowns, uh, while averaging 8.7 yards per attempt. He thrived from a clean pocket, completing 14 of his 15 passes for 154 yards, which, which is interesting. So, analytics-wise, they didn't like the interior offensive line week one outside of Brandle, right? But overall, like, beyond... Dexter Lawrence, who had, I, I think he had six pressures and had that one sack, of course. They're pretty good. I, also, Lawrence had, had that uh, quarterback hit that resulted in the interception. But if this offensive line can give Sam Darnold some time, as well as be able to run the ball, 
Or it could be dangerous, man. Hmm. Speaking of dangerous, uh, Vikings versatile defensive weapon Andrew Van Ginkel uh, was on with Good Morning Football. Now, same about the interview. It was nice at ease, Pete Schrager talking him up and stuff. But mainly I was wondering, first off, a- AVG looking like a dude who you'd want to hang out with on the weekend. You know what I mean? Whoa. Just uh, listen to some deep cut, maybe some vinyl. I don't know, man. But uh, my main question is, like, where was this interview taking place? So I, I feel like the Vikings should have like a dedicated video setup, right, for all, all these uh, call-ins to the, the various networks and stuff. But th- this was interesting. So it, it just looks like a regular office. Uh, and so we're looking for clues. So call me nerdy. This is what I kind of like to do. Like if you see a if you see a historical picture uh, in front of like a building or a street or something, I like to find where it is on Google Maps. <laughs> And also nerdy stuff like this, too, just like finding clues. So the sticker uh, up on the cabinet uh, is PFEMS, which is the Professional Football Equipment Manager Society, which obviously that means that this is likely the equipment manager's office, which is kind of awesome. Also, I didn't know that they had a society, but obviously it's not a secret society because we know about it now. Or maybe they want us to know about it. I don't know. But I I like that it's not the... Pro Football Equipment Managers Association. I love that it's a society, man. It's kind of awesome. Like, is there hazing for initiation? I want to know. Like, do you have... I was going to take that a different way, but no. Nah. Uh, but <laughs> but that's kind of awesome. I, I love that there's a group. I, I kind of want to get in the group because equipment managers are awesome, especially uh, they have the first dibs on, on like, the jerseys and stuff, and, and they know what the layout's going to be, like, if they have, you have alternate uniform and stuff, especially, like, Oregon and, and things like that. Kind of awesome, man. Mm. Uh, th- something that is not awesome with Andrew Van Ginkle. So, he should have been shoe in for Defensive Player of the Week, Week 1 for the NFC, uh, but Tyreek Stevenson... Can't be mad because that's the U B and the U, but I mean, whatever. Four tackles, broke up two passes, also had a 43 yard pick six. But I mean, Will Levis basically just like chucked that out there, and Stevenson was just like, thank you. I mean, it, it what was it as film and read and react intensive as AVG's pick? Probably not, but I mean, AVG was just good. I'm just good week one, and hopefully be, he'll be in contention for future weeks. But uh, four total tackles, a pick six, a sack, three pressures, a pass broken up, uh, PFF coverage grade of 95.9, which is the first amongst edge rushers. So I thought I figured that was pretty good, but it's okay. I'll give this one a pass. Like if Stevenson was from anywhere else, like if Stevenson was from Florida, we would file lawsuits, or no, Florida State. That they're the lawsuit school. Hmm. Uh, but also, uh, with, with Niners Week coming up, uh, Cam Inman, uh, beat writer in San Francisco. My mentality is I'm playing this week uh, 49ers Christian McCaffrey on Sunday on Sunday game at the Vikings. Calf Achilles kept him out of the opener. Doubtful. Like I, he, He's listed as limited for their first practice today on Wednesday. I'm not seeing it. Like I, I don't see them being so cautious with him that they held him out of week one, and then all of a sudden with the – tendonitis they just put him out there and achilles tendonitis can be a precursor to a tear so i don't see it man i don't see it also could this be it for mccaffrey he is 28 right and he's got a lot of miles on him and he has had significant injuries before so i mean this could just be it like could he pull like a because running backs just hit the wall like it doesn't really matter whether it's sean alexander whether it's ty Gurley, whether it's whoever like could this be it for mccaffrey I don't know. Jordan Mason's still a bad dude, though. So Vikings are gonna have to bring their lunch pail, man. Also, so the Vikings put up the you know, their field pass videos, and it's a couple of great shots in this. So one is uh, up at the top, Kevin O'Connell on the sideline, just like in the coach's stance, uh, watching the Justin Jefferson touchdown where he singled up against Deontay Banks. Hey, Deontay Banks won all that smoke all off season. He got it. Mm. Uh, and also the offensive line sitting uh, sitting on the bench as they're running up the score. And you know, Darisaw Brandle, Dalton Reisner over there on the left as well, uh, run up the score, uh, run the score up on them, keep it going. And I, I love that mentality. And that's what it needs to be because, yeah, 2022 was fun. All these single-score games. 2023 was not fun. All these single-score games going the other way. If you have a chance to stomp on your opponent figuratively, go get it. Go, go get it. Put up points and let Flores' defense have some fun, man. Like, if you're in the second half and you're up two, three, four scores, 
things get really juicy for that pass rush, man. Once uh, you know, game scripts uh, dictates that the opposing team has to just throw, throw, throw. Just pin your ears back and go. That's, that's going to be the recipe, man. Something I love. Also, uh, I love Justin Friggin' Jefferson. So, a- as we said, you look at Ayuk, who we'll see this week, as well as CeeDee Lamb and Jamar Chase. Like, all the drama with all these uh, receiver contracts. The fact that Jefferson signed the largest non-quarterback deal in NFL history. Four years, 140 with $110 million guaranteed. And there was there was zero goose egg Andrew Russell drama that wasn't manufactured by Florio. It's pretty damn amazing. And then you get to Jamar Chase. So, Chase, uh, a couple weeks ago... Uh, say, or last week, saying that uh, he wants to get paid more than Justin Jefferson, and not just by a penny more, by, by a lot more. Quote, if I want to beat J- Justin Jefferson, I'm going to beat the ish out of Justin. Not by a penny, brother. Uh, Jamar Chase wants his money. And, of course, Chase and Jefferson go all the way back to LSU. Uh, but reportedly, Chase turned out a very similar deal. So uh, this is from James Rappian from Sports Illustrated, uh, curated by the 33rd team. Offer Jamar Chase reportedly turned down from the Bengals. Four years, 140 with $90 million guaranteed. Now, that's the exact same framework and outline as Jefferson, the four for buck forty. Of course, cash flow uh, is important how it goes, but also $90 million guaranteed is $20 million less uh, than the 110 that Jefferson got. So maybe that's the sticking point there. But, uh, I mean, he's got two years left on his deal. Like he's not going to get better than this. So we've reached the point of the negotiations where this is obviously leaked by the team. All right. And th- this is what happens too is like if negotiations don't go well, the player's agent will leak to the insiders like, oh, the team is being unreasonable. And if things aren't going well, the, t- uh, the team will then leak to the insiders, oh, this is what we offered. And he turned it down. Is it true? Who knows? But in the court of public opinion, like these things matter. Right. And it, Chase's obsession with trying to beat Jefferson is just so pathetic. Like, your team just lost, and you were bad, and you weren't prepared because you weren't uh, active in camp. So get out there, man. Get out there and earn your money, yeah, just like Justin Jefferson did last year, even though he got injured, right? Uh, but why are you so obsessed with me? That's it, man. Uh, but that's it. Your thoughts are thoughts. A beautiful Thursday. Uh, Vikings news dump. You know what to do. Skull. Production value.